the lies come from the enemy. These negative thoughts come from the enemy. And he does a good job of just planting his of, of doubt, of insecurity, of comparison. And it's a trap that mm -hmm. if we believe it long enough, it then becomes our truth. Once you understand and you're fully aware of like, okay, that's not my thought. Because that thought doesn't line up with what God says about me, right? right? And, and the truth that he has for me then I should disregard that. Yeah. Our life has been this negative algorithm for so long That's good. that all we see all the time is the doubt in things. We're very pessimistic. We're not optimistic about the future. We see the worst in people. Life is just what it is. And we got to retrain our brain. We got to retrain the algorithm of our life to go back to how we were created to be. And then it's really not his thought. It's our thought. We've yeah. owned it. Right. And now because we own it. Right. The patterns of our life, the results of our life, the effects of our life, it kind of just reflects Absolutely. that original seed that we've watered so much. We just believe like this is who we are. Right. This is what we think. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to A Leveled Up Life podcast. I'm Brandon Mir Courtney. And this podcast is all about helping you level up your life in every area of your life, really in the areas that matter most, your faith, your family, your fitness, your franchise, and your finance. Our goal every week is to sit down with you and help you go to the place, to the spot, to the level that you want to get to, closing the gap from where you are to where you know you could and should be. And so our goal today is to really help you break down some barriers, break down some strongholds, maybe some some roadblocks to success, some things that are holding you back from getting to the place where you know you could be. And so Paul McLean, let's talk about Good it, man. Let's back, talk man. about it. Good man, to be hey, back. I'm excited to be on Thursday when we do the recording, man. It's it's, it's my my most enjoyed morning because I know I get to join with you, man, agree, and man. then bring some great value to you guys. And um, I think what we're going to talk about today, man, this is like, this is the nuts and bolts. This is the foundation. Like everybody wants to build something great, but when you, what you see as far as the actual building, it has a lot to do with the foundation, right? Good, yeah. I mean, you could build something over a long period of time and the moment that something comes, it could fall down pretty quick, right? Yep. And so our goal is to help you build a great foundation. And so as you start moving towards those next levels, man, you're not going to just hit that level and fall right back to the next level, but you're just progressively moving up. And it might not be by leaps and bounds, but my goal every day is just to get a little bit better. And so today I think this is something that as we look at how we can kind of go through all these practical things and all these areas that do matter most, I know that there's some things that just kind of hold true that impact all of those things, right? And that's the foundation. And, and we're really going to talk about, you know, your mindset, your thought process, like your beliefs, you know, your perception and unpack that because what I know to be true is this. In the past 16 years of, of building businesses, building families, I got five kids, brands got four, man, we go on vacation. It's like, dude, we, we're, Shut we're, the place yeah, down. we're taking over, right? Um, but, you know, I, I just know that, these are the, this is the stuff that when it changed, my external changed. When my thoughts changed, my external changed. And um, I know it was for a, a long time. I just I didn't know why I thought what I thought, right? Yeah. And I think sometimes when we can pause and and really ask ourselves like, why do I think this? And really kind of think about what we're thinking about. It changes everything. And so today, guys, we're gonna we're gonna dive into some stuff that is really gonna be foundational for you to level up and continue to level up. And so, Brian, I got a I got a question because this is something that that I thought about a lot, which was like, where do my thoughts come from? Yeah. You know what I mean? And and I, I remember feeling kind of guilty about some of the thoughts I had. Like, man, why do I think this way? And then I then I would watch somebody or hear somebody talk, and I would I would like almost assume that they didn't have my same thoughts and then make me feel inadequate. Like, dude, I'm jacked up. Right. Right. Like I'm, I think I'm screwed up. And it wasn't until I kind of started like, you know, getting around top thinkers and, and getting into like these, these extra behind the scenes rooms where I could kind of associate and connect as I built my business and, and leveled up was, man, no, we're all a lot more alike than we are not alike. Yeah. And I realized that, man, like everybody struggles with these things. I'm not just the one with dysfunctional thoughts and, and, and struggling and battling in my mind day in day out. Most people do. And, and I think it starts with understanding like where the thoughts come from. So like, do you think like the thoughts come from you? Like where do these thoughts originate from? I think, you know, our, our life is always moving in the direction of our strongest thought. And so really like what we're talking about is 
well, if that's true, then <laughs> where are these thoughts coming from? Are they my thoughts? Are they God thoughts? Are they the devil's thoughts? I would say for us, man, our thoughts come from from the enemy, from the adversary. Uh, I think just all throughout our life, he does a really good job of just planting these negative negative thoughts, negative um, ways of, of of thinking. You know, and over time, these small seeds of doubt, insecurity, yeah. um, comparison, then begin to over time grow up into a great harvest that now we're reaping. Like he plants something in us. Um, uh, for me, I was thinking about this this morning. Um, about man, my, I have like these knee problems, right? And so I, I was telling I myself, think your like, knee knew you were going to say that. My, it started, my it knee didn't know that. Yeah. Like it knew what was coming. It didn't know what was coming. It was acting out. I was thinking about like getting my getting my fitness back right and and getting back into the gym and just tr- kind of get back into routine. And I remember last year, one of my goals it popped up on my notes app. Like, hey, get back into the gym, get a six pack. This is 2021. Yeah. Like, get a six pack. And none of those things ever happened. All right. Because, like, I had this thought that my, I couldn't work out because my knee was so bad. And so my, that negative thought that was like, that's not a thought of God. That's not a thought of like, dude, I could do so many other exercises, so many other things outside of just like this simple, like, there's a knee pain that I have. Mm-hmm. But like, that thought of I can't do something, then. I'm reaping the harvest of this this lie that's not, that that I'm now living this. I don't know if that makes sense or not, but um, to answer your question, the lies come from the enemy. These negative thoughts come from the enemy, and he does, uh, like I said, a good job of just planting seeds of, of doubt, of insecurity, of comparison, and it's a trap that mm-hmm. if we believe it long enough, it then becomes our truth. Um, it's and, the same trap, though, dude. Isn't it like since the history of time? Hundred like, percent, man. Back the very to like, beginning, Genesis. Genesis. Two. Eat. You know, did God really say not to eat of this apple? He starts to plant these seeds, man, and over time, and all he has to do is plant them one time, uh-huh. and then, and then, as long as we listen to him, then we be, then we start to repeat them, and then we're doing his work for him. And then it's really not his thought; it's our thought. We yeah. owned it, right? And now because we own it, right. The patterns of our life, the results of our life, the effects of our life, it kind of just reflects Absolutely. that original seed that we've watered so much. Yeah. Now it's like we just believe like this is who we are. This right. is what we think. And, and the crazy thing, man, like get, that made me think like, so remember when, um, you know, so I was doing financial services, I'd always say like, let's get better. Let's build some skills. Let's learn the objections that a customer or client has. Yeah. And then, and then once we do that, we can best serve that person. We can provide the value that we intend to. We can show them that we care. We can lead, guide, and direct them. But I'd always say, like, man, they're not in another room learning new objections. They're not like, let's get together and come up with some new ones. Right. They're always the same. Yeah. But we're getting better. And I think that as we unpack this, you know, it's like once you understand and you're fully aware of like, okay, that's not my thought. Because that thought doesn't line up with what God says about me, right? right? And, and the truth that he has for me, then I should disregard that. Yeah. You know, like my daughter Parker, she's like, so dad, like, should I like write it down and throw it away? Like, what? I'm like, do whatever you want. But like, you could in your mind type it out and then like you hit delete. But the goal is to not hold that thought if it's not a God thought. And we know what that is yeah. because God loves you and he created you in your mother's womb. Like he wants to help you, to guide you to a purpose that he's planned before you were even born. So, like, we, if it's not that thought, then it's not that thought, right? Yeah, I think the enemy, what he does is there's this term that we often use, like, in the church world called a stronghold, uh-huh. right? It's just a military term that they, back in the day, they would build these massive walls, and they would be extremely deep, extremely thick. And the whole point of this stronghold was to either keep what was important on the inside or keep the enemy from coming into their territory, keep people out. And I think it's the same thing what the devil tries to do, he tries to build these strongholds in our mind. And over time, they become so massive and so big that we just live life um, with these strongholds. They just become normal. It becomes Mm -hmm. everyday living, everyday thinking. And then we don't even know that we're living a life so far under our potential, our possibility, because the stronghold has just become a normal way of living. And then I'm surrounded by other people who have similar strongholds, similar ways of thinking. And I just think my low level life is just normal until you can, there's that still small voice on the inside of you that says, Hey, there's something bigger. There's something better. There's something greater. There's a new level to life. And I think for a lot of people, it's hard to identify what that big stronghold is. Maybe it's like your self-image. You're not good enough. You're not strong enough. Like you were saying, you, you, you begin to like compare with other people and you get into these other rooms and go, hey, these people are no different than me. 
Like, I can't be the only one with these jacked mm-hmm. up thoughts. Like, okay, I, I hear them sharing their stories and kind of the things that we, they went through. And so I think for, for most of us, if we want to get to that next level, it's number one, realizing that these self-deprecating, these, these, these bad thoughts aren't from me. Yeah. These are, these are not how I was designed to think, to live, to act, to respond. And so number one, you got to identify it. Like, what are the things holding me back? What are the thoughts that are not of me? And then you got to replace those thoughts with the truth. Yeah. Like, who am I really? What, what, uh, what image and likeness am I made in? Who am I created to be? So it's like replacing the trash with the truth. Yeah. Right. And, um, but it starts with identifying it. It starts with going, Hey, this, this ain't from, from, from God. Yeah. This ain't it, it's almost like, I love what you said about, like, it just becomes unnoticed. Yeah. It's like the first thing is like, dude, like becoming aware of it. I remember like reading this article about how, um, back in the day they would show the, they'd have these movies and then an ad would play. And it was like such a, <laughs> a quick, like, it was like a scene, like you couldn't even notice it. And, it, and it's almost like, but they knew, even though consciously you couldn't see it, like subconsciously it was building that, right? Until all, all, all of a sudden, by the time you were done with the movie, man, you you craved right. that Coca-Cola or whatever right. it was, right? And that and that's what it did. And I think too often it's the same tactic that that we have used to us where it just becomes unnoticed. And now our our these every little cue that goes off, it gives us this craving. to like, why do I crave to do this, right? right. I know I want to go work out. Why am I craving the goldfish more? You know what I mean? That, that's my my issue. Like goldfish, <laughs> Tapatio Doritos, man. I what? feel like they put nicotine on that. <laughs> probably Because I crave that more than a smoker, bro. Like I just, I, I want it. Yep. You know, but you start, like, you know what you want, but then you're like, I'm not doing it. Right. Like I know I want to have a better relationship in my with God and my faith, but why can I not just spend a little time at night or in the morning just praying, you know, or reading a, a quick scripture? I know I want to have a better relationship with my spouse, but why is it so easy yeah. when I get home to work from work just kind of falling into that that routine of arguing and like, did you do this? Did you do that? And kind of going through this list of right. what didn't you do? And you know, and and you know, justice for, uh, for you and mercy for me, right. right? Like I should be good, but but like we know that, like we want a better relationship with our kids, but we fall in the same patterns. And and I think that's true for everyone of, of us, you know. And I know for me, like my struggle was not thinking I was good enough, right? And so I didn't know that for a long time. So what did that leave me doing? It left me chasing the next thing. And so when I was when I was here and I'd have arrived, I was so focused on there, on another gap. And so I never had the peace, the fulfillment. Like if if I hit a goal, it was like, yeah, but I could have w- woke up a little earlier. I could have done a little more. I could have made that extra phone call. If if I didn't hit the goal, it was like, oh, see, yeah, that's because you're not good enough. Right. Validation to support the verdict that I'd already come to believe, which was originated from that little seed of that thought of like, dude, you're just not good enough. And it could have came from me being a kid. I mean, who knows where it came from? It could have been like me just trying to show up for my dad. Who knows? Right. But but what I know is as I started to unpack that, then I started to be able to defeat that, you know? And um, and it's it's a true with every area. Like I remember Brand even being in insurance and and having this initial thought. And I had it, man, I needed to take care of my family. I was 19, right? And you know, and I had my I had my first child already. And if you're from the high desert, you know, like man, kids just come sooner as soon as I got here. <laughs> and uh, I remember like a lot of like the kids in high school, man, which is not not a good thing by any means. I think everybody knows that, but they were having kids, and the guy was gone. And so I remember making a decision like that ain't gonna be me. Yeah. Like I'm gonna step up, stop doing the stupid stuff I was doing. Like I'm gonna. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take care of my family. And so I stepped into the insurance business, and I remember the first thing I struggled with was like, dude, I'm too young. Like these clients that are 55. Why would they listen to me? Why would they listen to me? Got no authority. And dude, and, and I remember hearing that over and over again, but then I started to get, I started to spend more time around people that had a different opinion on that subject, on that thought. I started to listen to audios, right? This was back in the day with MP3s. I started to have phone calls with people that were at levels above and they were kind of like spotlighting where I could put my feet. And um, I realized, and, and thank God, Brian, like, and maybe somebody on here listening today, maybe that's you or like, it's not quite a stronghold, but you've been starting to, to believe a bad thought and it's, and this is where you catch it. Yeah. And I caught it and I remember like, man, what, what's another story I could tell myself? And, and so I told myself like, man, I, if I'm, this is my opportunity to be vulnerable 
and then with the client to connect with them and to really, you know, show them that p- the concept of people don't care how much you know until you know how much they care. Yeah. And so maybe I don't know a lot because, man, I'm brand new. I'm 19. I'm standing down with these 50-year-olds and talking about how to structure retirement. It doesn't make a lot of sense, but, man, I just left it. I put my head down, went to work, and I reminded myself that, man, I care about this person. Yeah. I, I'm going to go the extra mile. If I don't have the answer, I'm going to get the answer. That's good. And if somebody, you know, the, the reality is people don't need to know the man if they know the man that knows the man. Like, I, I don't have to be the man if I'm willing to be open, honest, transparent, humble, get the answer, I could help them. And, dude, that led me from the demolishing that stronghold in the next 10 years being a, a top producer top, you know, two, three producers in the entire nation with selling insurance and building a team. But I remember back that thought and how close it was for me to really building it. Yeah. Like for you, what, what's been like a, like I a think, thought that kind of got you? Yeah. Well, I mean, the reality is we're, we're created beings created by a creator to live life a certain way. And so it's like, it, it, we live in a social media age, right? An algorithm word world. That's like the, a new world that we word that we become associated with recently, like this algorithm, like what's on your algorithm, what's showing up, what's popping up, what's in your yep. feed. Like you ever click something and then all of a sudden it's like, now it's on your Facebook. Now it's you on your Instagram. Now dude. it's, you know, exactly. You, you say it. something yeah. and it's popping up. Over, it's because this algorithm, this created product has been trained to show you what you think about. Mm-hmm. And then the more you see it, it, it then becomes what you think about. So like the same is true for us. Like we're create, like God made us to make choices. He gives us free will. And the more we do something or think something, it it then becomes part of our life in a good way or a bad way. Like we have the option to do it. And I think some of us, um, our life is like, has been this negative algorithm for so long that all we see all the time is the doubt in things, the, the, we're very pessimistic. We're not optimistic about the future. We see the worst in people. Um, life is just uh, what it is. So it's really this thought that like, we got to come back to, man, we got to retrain our brain. We got to retrain the algorithm of our life to to go back to how we were created to be, which is number one, in relationship with God, like in relationship with each other, um, living life to the fullest, going to uh, getting the, the best out of uh, the position that we're in. So we got to retrain the algorithm of our life. And it's like what you said, yeah. we have these default negative thoughts that they might come from childhood. They might come from uh, old relationships. They might come from just anything in life. And if you know something, if you like, if you have this thought, like, Hey, I need a, I don't like my life where it's at right now. Then I think that we have to, like I said, capture that thought and go, Hey, what's the thought that replaces this negative thought with a positive thought. And it could be as simple as getting around people who are thinking bigger than you, getting around people who had similar thought processes, but now they're living a new life and going, Hey, how do I get to that level? And I like what you said, it's almost like this borrowed confidence. Mm-hmm. It's almost like, Hey, um, I don't have everything that I, that I need. I don't know everything that I need to know, but I can get around people that do. I can get around people that are living the, the life that I want to live and then the more I get around, the more I associate, the more I dive into the things that I want. I might not have them yet, but over time, I'm retraining my brain. I'm retraining my yeah. thoughts. I'm retraining the way I look at life. And then before you know it, you can look back in one year, two years, five years, and your life is in a whole new trajectory. Your life is in a whole new place. And, and it just started by changing your thoughts. You know what I mean? Like it just started by rewiring the way you look at something. Um yeah, the association's big. Yeah, it's huge. I mean, like, dude, I I, I, re- <laughs> I used to look at it like this. Like, dude, I remember I was doing a meeting in Ohio one time, and uh, we went out to dinner afterwards, and where I was staying, it was close to the restaurant, right? So I'm just going to walk back. I'm wearing a suit, you know? I just got done speaking at this this conference, and dude, I get, I'm walking down this dark alley, and I, I, it didn't take very long for me to look around and be like, I don't think I should be walking down this dark alley. Probably not the best <laughs> I mean, idea. Like, I'm in the wrong, I'm in the wrong city, the wrong, wrong, this is not an alley I should be on, man. And um, I remember like having this, this fear, this fear, like come upon me, like, dude, it's about to go down. And, uh, and I don't know if I'm going to win this one. Cause there's a lot of them and there's one of me, you know? And, um, but I thought about it like this, like, dude, if I was walking down that dark alley and I had fully equipped Navy SEALs, right. Just walking around me and, um, and, and, and I was, dude, all of a sudden that feeling would shift 
instantly. Absolutely. Dude, almost like, you know, I might, you know, antagonize something. Like, right. you looking at me, dog? Trying to pick a fight. Yeah, that's what's going on, man. Not because I'm, like, fully equipped to fight. Not because I'm an MMA, because I'm not. But because of my dudes. Yeah. Because of my guys that I got with me, all of a sudden, man, I'm a different level of confidence. And, uh, man, it's so important. Like, even getting, like, dude, I, I remember, um, like, getting into going to like meetings and stuff and, and having the opportunity to like, you know, pay a little more to get into like the behind the scenes, like that, that next level room. Right. right. And, um, and it didn't make a lot of sense because you know, I, I had just started and I, I, I made a, a choice then to think to really kind of do this trade off. And I'm pretty logical. Like I'll trade things off. And my trade off was like, like, what is my opportunity cost? If I don't get around somebody that I can use my foresight to be what their hindsight was. Like if I'm crossing this gap between where I'm at to where I, where I want to go, and, and that could be for anybody. That can be related to your faith, your fitness, your franchise, finance, all those things. If I'm crossing that gap, what's like one of the easiest ways I can cross it? Yeah. Well, it's if I can see these footprints that are placed from where I'm at to where, where I want to go. And then if those footprints can not only be there, but if there can be spotlights on those things yeah. to make me so aware that even the distractions – those thoughts, those different subliminal messages, my old me, the past, all those things, if that spotlight can be so bright on that foot, that footstep, man, I'm more likely to take it. Right. And now as I take that, I'm not stepping down and falling off the path. I'm not, you know, taking significantly longer to get there. I mean, I'm not going to fall off a cliff because maybe if I step here, dude, I'm going down a cliff. I don't know what I don't know. Right. And so I remember getting around, and that was all related to association, and getting around and just – asking questions, being a part of like that community. And crazy thing is before I knew it, man, I started to identify, identify myself as somebody completely different. Right. I had my identity that was rooted from my prior experiences, what authority figures had said about me, right? Maybe that was in school, first couple of jobs, whatever it was. But as that time went on and I stay, I stayed in that presence of, of those, those upper rooms, so to speak, and, it, and, and, spent all my money <laughs> to get in it because I didn't have a lot and made all the difference in the world as far as me leveling up and getting to that next level. And um, and I think that's what you're saying, man. It's like sometimes we need to get around other people. And when we see their thoughts, now all of a sudden that, that, that throws a spotlight on the negative thoughts that have kept us at a lower level and, and kept us behind an unlocked door, kept us trapped. Right behind an unlocked door where we're like, oh, we, not me. I can't do that. I can't have that body. I can't have that relationship with God. There's no way I could be that spirit. And all these things that we think, it's like, no, man, the door is unlocked. Right. But are you getting around others that can kind of help you and say, you know, the thing's unlocked. Right. I can see from the other side right. where, where you think it's locked. It's not locked. Just, just, just unlock it. Yeah, that's good. You know? No, I like that. I think when, when you get around other people, not only are you listening and learning, but you're also inviting accountability into your life. Yeah. Like, I think a lot of us, we have these big goals, dreams, aspirations to be something or do something, but without accountability, it's really hard to do. It's like I was talking about Dude, my yes. 2021 goals, my 2022 goals. I can go back through. I'm like, well, I didn't let anyone in on these goals. Which means you didn't really want it. Therefore, I didn't really want it, and I didn't execute. And it, it shows. Like, I, I still don't have a six-pack, yeah. you know? <laughs> you can't tell her now. You can't good. tell her now because I cover it up and I wear yeah. black all the time. <laughs> but, you know, it helps. But I'm trying to level up my fitness. And yeah. so I'm bringing you, the listener, in on kind of my goals. I'm trying to um, – get better in every aspect, but you have to invite accountability. And I think for me, when I first started kind of this journey of faith and getting into ministry, what that looked like, part of the reason that we were able to kind of, I don't, I don't know. Part of the reason that we were able to just dive in so quickly is because number one, um, we identified an area in our life that we were lacking. We got around other people who were further ahead in us. And then we invited accountability into kind of our spiritual yeah, journey, you know? And so uh, it, it wasn't just like, Hey, a real, um, a real vague goal or a real just like, hey, yeah, I just want to, I just want to grow deeper with God. I just want to, you know, have a better relationship. It was like, no, I want to memorize 30 verses. Hey, I want to be able to pray effectively. Hey, I want to be able to minister to others. And then you invite people who are in those areas and say, hey, can you hold me accountable every week to like, hey, check in on me and 
and make sure I'm doing my part. And I think that's so important when it comes to any area of life. Like if you're trying to level up your fitness, your family, your faith, your finance, your friend, whatever it is, like you got to have accountability in those areas. Someone to keep you like, hey, you dropped the ball here. And it's not like accountability where they're going to shame and put you down. But it's it's finding the right people that could say, hey, you dropped the ball here. What can we change? What can we modify? What can we do to get better next week to keep growing? And I think you invite that accountability into your life. And then before you know it, you're now creating this network of people. Um, and then your life is just like on this up and up journey uh, to where you want it to be. It's just this continuing to to get better, to level up, to move forward, to progress. And uh, man, I, I don't know. I think yeah, that's a, I love that, dude. Yeah. And I think that, you know, t- to the point, like where, where somebody goes from like, I kind of want to level up. It's like, no, man, I'm committed to it. Like, like I, I'm going, like, I have now this vision, right, of, like, wh- what my life could be. Yeah. I have this vision of, like, where my family could be, my faith could be, my fine. I, I have a vision now. And when that vision becomes just so clear and, like, consuming, where you're like, man, I, I can see myself being there. Um, I mean, I think that that, that kind of helps with the whole want to, that desire. And for me, man, like, I, my desires always kind of come out of one or two things. One, I get to a place where I'm like sick and tired of being sick. Like it hurts so bad, right? right? You look at the Israelites, like that's their cycle, right? Mm -hmm. Well, dude, that's like, that was my cycle. Maybe it's your cycle too, where it's like, you know, you're, you're, you're doing the things you need to do. And then the once you kind of get above where you expected to get, right? Like where your experience is almost elevating and hovering over what you even expected to get. Then it's like where compromise starts to creep in. Yep. And before you know it, like, man, you're so disciplined in your fitness. You're so disciplined in your faith. But man, it's just like, dude, life's going good. Right. So I don't gotta read the word today. Mm-hmm. Man, life's going good. I'm gonna skip the gym workout. I'm gonna, you know, eat some Cheeto puffs, like whatever it is. Like the, life's going pretty good. My my relationship's going, man, my marriage hasn't been this good. So like we can skip date night tonight. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, man, what what takes place is like almost unconsciously, we just slowly kind of go down. And um, before we know, we hit that that bottom. And uh, so that's one way for me, Brandon, like. I'll usually make a shift and say, no, I'm now not just interested, dude. I'm committed. Yeah. And I remember that was even with my marriage at, at an early age because I was stubborn, man, at 19. Like, it was like, I knew I was right and you were not right. Like, that was like my thought process. Right. Which that took a lot of maturity because that's the opposite. You know, most of the time what I think is, isn't. But when my when we finally got to a breaking point, that's when I was like, when I got to do something different. And that's where I did something different. Yeah. Um, the other thing is repetition of message will help change your thoughts. So like when I was saying, when I, when I got around different association accountability, all of a sudden, now that message becomes repeated so much that that's almost like that thought seems more familiar to you than the thought that you're holding on in the first place. And now it's easy to substitute that thought for the bigger thought. But it takes a repetition of message or it takes, dude, this hurts so bad. I got to do something different. I like the repetition of message better. Yeah. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Then, then the whole, dude, everything's falling apart. L- help. Help me. You know what I mean? 100%. Speaking of, speaking of help me, I remember one time I was out in the middle of the desert riding a dirt bike with my boys and um, trying to teach them how to ride a dirt bike. And I didn't know how to ride a dirt bike at all. And so uh, I remember I wanted to get them a dirt bike. So I started researching, and started looking into it. I ended up buying like these two Chinese dirt bikes from this lady in a, in a Walmart parking lot. Nice. And so I, I gave them these dirt bikes for Christmas and we, I would take them out to the middle of the, of the desert. And I would, you know, we would ride around on these tracks and I would leave them at the, the, the kid tracks and I would try to sneak off and go ride on the bigger ones, try to um, not have them see their dad, you know, fall, um, try to help my self image. But um, I remember riding around on these tracks. And if you've ever been on a dirt bike track, you know, in the turns, like they're kind of carved out, like these berms that you go through. And uh, I didn't know that, that you had to kind of have momentum going yeah. into it. And so I remember my first couple of times going through it, I was just kind of laid out on my back like a turtle <laughs> with my feet in the air. And then, you know, because because I wasn't going fast enough, I was yeah. going through a kind of pre-carved out track. Um, but then, you know, after you get used to it for a while, then y- you know what to do. And it's, it's the same thing with our thought life, man. It's like these thoughts that we think over and over and over, whether they're good or whether they're bad, um, the more you think them, the easier they then are to repeat, That's true. you know? And so it's like, wh- where's the direction of my life headed? Well, it's headed in the direction of my strongest thought. And so it, it all comes down to getting around the right people, having accountability in your life. And I think it's, it's one thing, like when you have a vision, when you know that there's more in store for you, when you know that there's that next level for you, uh, I think it starts with number one, having, having the vision, 
Mm-hmm. Like, like, what is it? Where am I trying to go? So I got to see it. But not only do I got to see it, I got to say it. Like, I got to start bringing people. I'm, I'm saying, hey, this is where I'm going to get to. And then when I, once I, I see it and I say it, then I start to live life according to what I'm seeing and saying. And then I, over time, then become it, right? Mm-hmm. And then after I become the thing that I'm now seeing and saying, now I, I'm living it. And it's all based on my habits. It's all based on, you know, the, the routines and things that I put in place to then see, say, become and live the life that I want to live. And so I think it's just creating, um, that'll preach. I don't know where that came from, but, um, I think it's just creating this, these, these habits, r- routines, um, of just doing the right things over and over and over. It's kind of like just what you're saying. I'd rather have, have the repeated thought, mm-hmm. you know, that then, that, the, that, that then becomes my life rather than get to a point of my life where I'm like screaming for help. And it's like, man, I got this terrible situation that's going to take years to tear down to then build up. It's like, Hey, why don't we start now with little habits, little things that we can progress to move forward. So yeah. I don't know, man. And so. I think, I think, dude, you gotta, you gotta kind of catch it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Cause once it becomes a habit, like, you know, it's most of what we do in our day, like 90% of it are all repeated thoughts. It's repeated habits. We gotta figure out like, how do we, how do we break that? You know, and that was yeah. my deal. It's like, you know, I became aware, but it was like, dude, the pull was so difficult. Right. And, um, for me, something that, that made a difference and I don't know where I got it from. Um, I know I read it in a book, but it was just like, stopping and pausing and and breathing. So when I would catch myself like getting ready to go into this routine or pattern that I didn't want to go into, right? You know, and dude, I had all kinds of routines that I needed to change. You know, I mean, I had to be all rebuilt up from everything. I mean, even like at a, at a, you know, early age, man, I was smoking cigarettes, Newport shorts, listening to Tupac and my Escort Sport ZX2. Dude, I wish we had social media back then Um, because... I was seeing some of those videos of you oh, smoking dude, a cigarette. That would have been great, yeah. <laughs> Listening to Tupac. <laughs> I mean, dude, it was... I can't uh, picture it now, but I believe you. Dude, yeah, so so it was... Uh, I mean, I, I would be like hotboxing my, my Ford Escort going to an appointment. Dude, I was, it was terrible, man. And uh, that was BC, before Christ. Yeah. And, you know, on my way to him. Gosh, it was even while I was with him trying to unpack that. And still, you know, but like, it was like, dude, I, I had so much stuff to undo. But as I started to like learn, man, I started to like say like, okay, this, let me try this yeah. because heck this ain't working. So let me try this. And, and what really works is like just stopping and, and breathing, you know, and like before you go into engaging that whatever you're craving or what have you, just to stop and to breathe, because what it does is it, it gives you like that pattern interrupt. Right. And um, that pattern interrupt gives you the ability to say, okay, what is my intention? Like, what do I really, what's going to align me with my, what's going to put me in alignment with my assignment? So where are my feet going? If this is the path to get me to my next level, is this choice doing that? Or is this choice not doing that? And um, I think that's such an important thing to kind of like just take a pause and breathe because it, it just interrupts that pattern. And then you start to ask yourself, how do you identify yourself? Right? Like, I remember when I, I I mean, I tried to stop smoking quite a few times and, and, um, and you you know, if you ask me like, dude, are you going to, you know, smoke or whatever? I'm like, no, I'm trying to stop. But when I said, I'm trying to stop, right. I'm saying I'm identifying as a smoker that's trying to stop. And, and it wasn't until I said, no, I'm not, I don't smoke anymore that's when it changed. And it's crazy. Like it's just a one phrase, but dude, that one phrase of like you said, what you say and what you see, what you say is so crucial. Absolutely. Yeah. I remember, you know, reading this and it talked about like this, this study they did by, with Harvard, it was two groups and uh, one group, they said, we're going to play um, the donation game. Right. The other one was, we're going to play the wall street game. No, no, I'm sorry. It wasn't donation. It was community game. So one was, we're going to play this community game. The other one was we're going to play this Wall Street game. And, and it was to go out there. You had to, you know, start a business, earn money. And it was just, it was a game, right? And it was a, it was a focus group. But at the end of it, they were, they were to give what they wanted to give, right? And the chair community game group, they gave a whole third more than the Wall Street game. It was the same game. Everything was the same. It was just a one word different. One was community one was Wall Street. Yeah. And so at the end, that that whole group, you know, gave a whole additional third more. And what it says is like, man, what you say and what you identify yourself with, what you identify, 
you know, people around you, your future, your circumstance, your situation, like what you're saying and what you identify that as, it makes, it makes such a big, big difference, you know? That's good. Um, you know, what are some, what are some things that like you think, you know, I know you talked about like, so like identifying the stronghold, which I think is crucial. Yeah. And that's kind of like for everybody on here, man, we, we want you to be like, that's good, but we want it to make it real for you. So like, that's something to do, like identify that stronghold. Once you identify it, like w- you replace it with truth. And then what's like, w- what are some other steps to really kind of demolish that you place your truth? Do they say it, think it right? Like what's yeah, that whole I think, process um, look like? You know, Proverbs uh, 23, 7, for as he thinks in his heart, so is he. And so it's, it's not just, you know, replacing it with the truth one time. It, it's getting it down deep in your heart and then meditating on it. Like, and I'm talking about like meditating, just like repeating it over and over and over. Yeah. I know you talked about, you know, uh, Dave, <laughs> Dave. Yeah. Well, well my his, father-in-law, he, <laughs> he does hot yoga. Right. <laughs> and, 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 and this is one of those things where you could tell, like when a thought just creeps up on you, like I w- it was said that he does hot yoga in his, in his tidy whities, you know, I don't know if that's true or not. And how the, what the studio gets well, down. Well, not with. that type of medication or a med- yeah, <laughs> meditation. That's what I think of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But meditation is but, like you but, said. But just- meditating on something is just like, chewing on it, thinking about it, processing it, looking at it from all different angles. So it's like, hey, I, I know this is a stronghold. I know it's not right. I know what the what, what the truth is. I'm going to replace this lie with the truth, but I'm not just going to do it one time. Every time the situation pops up, I'm going to re- I'm going to repeat the truth. I'm going to dissect the truth. I'm going to let people in on, hey, this new truth that I'm now speaking over my life. And so um, I think meditating is something that um, has a not a negative connotation in our world now, but just like a, a misconstrued meaning of what it actually is. It doesn't mean to just hum something over and over and over and turn on right. weird music and get, you know, yeah. kind of spooky. It's just like, man, I have this this thought about what God says I am, who I am, what's my new identity, what's the truth. And I just constantly remind myself of this th- truth. I repeat it. I, I think about it. I chew on it. So it's like, Hey, I am an overcomer. And so anytime doubt comes into my life, I just repeat this like thought from the word of God that, hey, no, I'm an overcomer. I can do all things through Christ. Like I'm the head and not the tail. I'm above and not beneath. But it's not some mantra that I just yeah. repeat be- for the sake of repeating. It's like I'm trying to get this truth down in my heart so then my the way I think can change and I could change my life, right? And so I think like what you said, stopping and breathing is super important. Um which that's extremely practical. It's like, I, I told a story at church the other day. Um, like if you had a long day or a frustrating day and you know your pattern of getting home is like, hey, you walk in, the house is a mess, kids are going crazy. If you know that happens five days a week and you don't enjoy that, then before you go inside, pause, pray, sit in the car for 10 minutes. Let your wife know like, hey, I'm sitting out here, I'm getting my mind right. You know, so when I come in, I'm not, I'm not dropping everything all the frustrations from work on you guys. And so you're just changing that routine. It's like what you're saying, you're just pausing and praying. And then in the same sense, it's very practical, meditate on what you want. Like I want to be fully present with my kids. I want to be fully present with my wife. I want to, you know, have good, meaningful conversations. I want to not just say, hey, how was your day? Good, good. All right, let's turn on the game. It's like, no, I want to be intentional with my time with them. I want to teach them something. I want to, I want them to to know that I'm listening. I'm leaning in to how their day was and I'm trying to help them. I'm trying to guide them. But it starts with with pausing, with being intentional, with meditating on good things. And so just very, very practical. Stop, breathe, like what you say, and then meditate on on the good things, man. Yeah. Well, I think, man, it's like, th- this is, this is the foundational stuff because I just know that like, when you know who you are, you'll know what to do. That's right? right. And so if you can start to unpack, like, what am I thinking about myself and, and what have you now? Now it's like, okay, now I know what to do. And it's easy to kind of step out of that old self or that same level self and step into the person that you need to become to be that next level. And um, man, I just think that on that journey, of going to the next level, sometimes it's not the destination that matters nearly as much as the person you're becoming along that process, you yeah. know? And um, and as we step to these next levels and higher levels, man, there's going to be a lot of like unpacking and, and some dirty work, some hard, you know, some work to, to be done to do that. And I know that that's our hearts is to not just have something where people kind of leave with a heightened awareness or maybe even some like insightful takeaways. We're like, wow, that's kind of a, a new thought. That's kind of a new way to see it. But to actually, you know, encourage you guys, man, go take some action on this because the reality is this. Brian said it like your life is always moving 
in the direction of your strongest thoughts. And you cannot have a positive life with a negative mind. And so as you're moving through these, these processes to these next levels, you've got to think like, man, is this thought lining up with where I want to go? And if it's not, man, you got to take it captive, yep. delete it, and then replace it with the truth. Write the truth, think the truth, speak the truth. And you could say, well, the truth can be, you know, this is how I look at it. So, like, you know, obviously we're, we're, we're men of faith. Like, my wife likes drinking half calf. She's actually upgraded, but before she went through a season where she get those like cure half cups, it calf? was half caffeine, half caffeine. So it was like with a person that's like, man, I'm not really committed yeah, yeah, yeah. to going all the way because I, I don't know. Yeah, I want too a much. caffeine buzz, yeah, but not too much. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I don't want to stay on decaf. I right. wanna, I'm halfway through that level up. <laughs> and so she would drink this half calf. The way I look at it, man, like that's like, like the general truths of, of these success concepts, right? Like, you know, you got to change your habits to change your life. You know, right. like that's the general truth. And then there's the supernatural kingdom truths that come from the one that created us and gave us an owner's manual in the form of a Bible. That's right. That's like a triple shot espresso. You know what I mean? Like, that's what I like to drink when I get up is I'll throw three shots of espresso in there because I, right. I ain't messing around, man. We got things to do. Let's go. And it's just a different level. And so I think when you take any stronghold that you've got and you can put it underneath the light of God. So this is this is how I think I, I would put it, man. Like when you when you're every day in this battle brand, I think it's like we're going to like a, a hearing, like like a court hearing. And and it's like the enemy's trying to get us to find all this evidence to support the verdict that we're not loved, we're not valued, we're not accepted, we're not good enough, and we really just don't matter all that much. But the moment that evidence touches the blood of Jesus, touches the truth, that's when that evidence becomes tainted evidence and it can no longer be used against yourself for who you actually are. That's good. And see, that's where every morning, if you can do that and throughout the day, taking those breaks, man, it's such a big deal. And you know, we're gonna, we're gonna have some bonus content that we wanna put out there so you can do this very thing. So you can actually say, okay, I got this, but man, I'm still struggling with like, what really is like my biggest stronghold? Because let's just, let's attack the first one, right? That's the thing. Like confused people do nothing. You know, like I always have a goal to get like to do one habit a year, right? And if I'm really jacked, maybe I do like two. But because I know if I'm like, man, I want to do this, 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 and this, I, I'm probably going to do nothing. Yep. And so there's probably a lot of strongholds. If you're like I am, man, I had a list, you know what I mean? And um, that I had, to, I had to go through and, and you know, destroy but we're going to give you some, some bonus content. So you could go to bonus.aleveleduplife.io. Um, go there, and, and you're going to be able to find some content that you can really continue to unpack all this throughout your week. So if you want to go there and you can look at, we're going to have um, a kind of a deeper dive into some of these concepts, like what is a breathing like pattern look like specifically like do you breathe in for how many seconds breathe out what does it all look like and 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 this is not something that i came up with like i'm like a a neuroscience cognitive nerd lately you know what i mean so like i've 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 gone through it and and it works i've done it for a long time so we'll give you those we're also going to give you a worksheet kind of like a workbook for you to go through that's going to ask you some practical questions where you can identify the stronghold and then also we'll have some categories where like if this is my stronghold this is the truth that I can tie it to so we'll have some scriptures that if that's for you and you're a person of faith or you're just like man I'm trying to go level up in my faith journey we'll have some actual scriptures that go to the feeling of I'm not good enough the feeling of man I just I don't think I matter at all the feeling of like man my past is too bad whatever that may be, or I'm never going to get married, right? I'm just going to be single my whole life. Or I'm always going to, you know, 98 diet plans later, I still got them love ha handles hanging on strong, dog. You know, whatever that lie is, we're going to have some, some, you know, exact truths that you can tie to it that will demolish that and set you up to level your life. And so I, be, be clear, go there. And that's where this will really kind of be a seed that starts to get watered. So again, it's bonus dot a leveled up life dot I O. Hey, thanks so much for tuning in to the A Leveled Up Life podcast. It's our pleasure. It's our joy to be able to help you close the gap between where you are and where you want to be. See you next time. Let's go. Let's go.